is local to the area and uh, delicious, beautiful and um, healthy. Uh, so yeah, dragon fruit and some jasmine tea. Mid-morning snack, that's about as pretentious and middle class as you're gonna get if you're not in Asia. Anyway, let's get on with this and uh, yeah, let's go So many times I lose the track When you showed up unexpectedly And I guess that's just your nature Subtle and sweet as a kind word from a quiet I did not see him buy this. Baby, you made this is dragon fruit. Easy. For those of you who don't know, it's really nice. It's very um, mild. Got lots of nice little seeds in it, so it's got a little crunchy texture. And it comes in white, but I've also seen it in like bright purple, which I mean. I think they taste exactly the same, but visually <laughs> the purple ones are really beautiful. But I'll take whatever. We are, I'm not sure, probably about 10 miles from PP, Co PP. And uh, we're motor sailing. We've got the sails up, but we've also got the motor on because it is uh, definitely not windy enough just to be sailing or at least not you know making any kind of progress on the way so motor sailing to Kopipi otherwise the weather is absolutely spectacular I mean look at this it is blue skies a little bit of cloud nice kind of cool fresh breeze and uh, it's not humid or muggy or anything it's just beautiful warm sunshine Lovely. I'm feeling very content. With the exception of one boat that I've sailed, or rather one catamaran that I've sailed, the monohull experience is better. It is more, you feel what you're doing. This boat, I love this boat, and it's perfectly suited, but there is literally, there is zero response from the helm. It's got hydraulic steering, so literally, if you turn the autopilot on, the wheel stops moving. It's, it's just a mechanic, it's not, there's no direct linkage. So you don't feel yourself sailing it, it's really just like motoring between different areas, and that's fine. So the monohull experience is a purer experience and a better experience from the sailor's point of view. However, as I always used to say to you know, one of my great friends, China, who used to berate me for having a TV on the boat, you know what, you have a house with a TV. We don't have a house, and really it's a platform for living on board six months or we live on board full time. Jesus is easy. Like just not have everything, you know, the amount of space I've got to move around. And it's only a 42 foot boat. Yes, yes, I know it's a catamaran and yes, yes, I know that it is, uh, it's not healing. But man, it's so easy. I'm sold. I'm happy. 
happy to take the, the sailing performance or the loss of sailing performance and trade it for the livability of this. Not this, but a catamaran. I think this, this week has absolutely sold, sold it to me. All we need to do now is find a catamaran that sails almost as well as a monohull, and then we're golden. And I do believe a couple of those boats do exist, maybe within our price range. Anyway, more information on that as the months progress. Anyway, nice to have some sun, nice to have some dragon fruit. I will make the lady of the boat uh, a lovely cup of tea. And um, that's our morning. Nick just passed me a cup of tea as well. That's what I call good service. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Lovely, it's like um, jasmine tea, really nice. Oh. What a fantastic sail. Just sitting up here in the bow of a catamaran, beautiful weather, sunshine, getting past dragon fruit and cups of tea through the little window here. Life is good. Please forgive me if I'm a little slow going Years of fast living stunning my growing Wow, look at that island just behind me there. That's not Koh Phi I don't know what that's called, but that looks absolutely spectacular. If Koh Phi is anything like that, I think we are going to be very happy indeed. There's Koh Phi That's what we're aiming for. Showed up unexpectedly, and I guess that's just your nature. Subtle and sweet as a kind word from a quiet strain. A little bit of swell. I don't know whether that's um, wake or whether it's swell, but it's this kind of more rolly type of waves than we've had, than we've seen at all so far. So that's interesting. That's been heavy on my mind For me to down Do you know what? I know, this. I, about this. I know this isn't real sailing, it's just like driving an RV round. But man is it easy. Yeah, very easy. I literally helm controls on, like autopilot on, put the cat on, make a cup of tea. No gimbals, no nothing. Well, like, off we go. This was our, if this was our minor hole, we'd be like, oh, oh. even, I mean, it's what? There must be 50 centimetres of swell. Yeah. But when boats go past, the boat gets knocked a lot. And I can always relate to how our, you know, Ruby Rose would, would be in that. And, you know, while she's an amazing ocean going vessel, you know, you do have to think, well, when you're making a cup of tea in the sink. Yeah. You know, our friends had a dive cylinder crash through the bloody. The, the hatch of the toilet and smash their toilet once, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Because the boat's zip, zipping in and out. So just behind me, just there, is such a spectacular little cove. It's so sweet and it looks absolutely beautiful. Currently quite a few people on the beach. They're courtesy of, I think, the long tail boats. But very, very beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. However, that is not where we're going tonight. We are going to this beach behind me here just underneath that massive cliff. You can see, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, I'm not sure, I hope you can. But there's a stretch of white sand and there's lots of day boats there, which I assume means it's a very pretty little spot. And I can see one boat, <laughs> one single lone boat with a mast, and that must be Sailing Nanji. So, We'll aim for where they are and uh, hopefully there's a bit of protection in that anchorage. There's a little bit of swell out here and it wouldn't surprise me if there was a bit of roll in the anchorage as well. So we'll just see how we go. Luckily being in a catamaran it's not such a big deal. If I was in a monohull I'd be like, uh, I mean look at this. before we knew it we were
were motoring into the anchorage with our friends sailing Nanji. It was too deep to anchor, however, there was a convenient mooring ball. However, we needed to check this before we set off. Um, okay, so we have just picked up a mooring buoy, which we're not feeling like 100% amazing about, but uh, that is so deep here that we don't really have many options. Um, so I'm going to go dive on, I can't dive 20 metres, which is the depth, but I'm going to dive as much as I can. And um, you just, All you've got to do is just check the rope, check, check the, the, above the buoy and below the buoy. Above the buoy and below the, the buoy. Fraying. The fraying. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. All shackles come loose if it's shackled. I think it's all rope this one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what I'm up to. way of uh, starting the afternoon. It's your lunch time actually. Oh. Yeah, my free diving definitely needs work, but uh, it did the job. Bit of weight coming through the anchorage there. It's definitely a boat, that's not the, uh, that's not the swirl from outside. Whew. How insanely beautiful, right? I can see Benita and Josh getting into their dinghy. I'm assuming sure they're coming out to say hello. <laughs> How are you? Isn't this amazing? Insane. We weren't too sure about taking the boy, but it looks all right. Yeah, they're all right. There was another cutting there, Dark Cat on it yesterday. It only left this morning. So oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't go anywhere. So yeah. They're right. They're pretty new. You okay? Surprisingly. Okay. Uh, like, there wasn't heaps of growth all over. Oh, we've got. Okay, well, I don't know. We just seem to have a lo lot of growth. Hello. 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 Hi, Marley. Hi, Marley. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm Teresa. I don't yeah, know. Hi, Yoshi. Hi, Yoshi. Nice to meet you, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Benita. 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 Oh, we don't mind. It's not our boat. <laughs> yeah, come on board for sure. Yeah. I know that's like the story of my life. Can't move, trying to film. Uh, 50 to 1. So if you put one litre in, that's 50 
now. No, it's not. That's just put it away. That's five litres in there. I don't think I need that, mate. You can have it, man. Like, it's no skin of my nose. It feels like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. It means we get to test out the size of the high field, too. That's a 9.9, too? Uh, eight. I think they're wanting to test out us to test out the entrance to be honest. We get rolled, we get rolled. Yeah. They've told us it's worth the uh, rough dinghy ride, so let's see for ourselves. I can see I can see calmer water. I can see calmer water. Shallow. In fact, back up quick, babe. Back up. That's it. There we go, running away, Ben. <laughs> survived. Oh, that got my heart going. <laughs> There's another one coming in. Post this in, babe. Huh? Post this, babe, in. Get out. I don't know what it is. Thanks, mate. So easy. Oh, this so is all right. If you deal with much white water or anything like bar crossing, so. Not really. Yeah, <laughs> now. <laughs> so as you come in, how there's other wave breaking, you don't go over it, you sit on the back of it. Yeah. And so it's always that deeper water, oh. and then you go the same speed as the wave. Oh, right, that's going to be out. Uh, we'll climb it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so when the waves come, it'll break through, and you have that flat period. So you put in breaking wave. Yeah. So that was a pretty wild dinghy ride. Wasn't expecting it as a breaking wave on the entrance to uh, this lagoon about there. And because uh, we weren't expecting it, we uh, ended up turning the bloody dinghy sideways, which is dangerous because that's how you roll the dinghy. Uh, thankfully, we managed to get it back. And it's pretty amazing in here. This is like, I don't really have the words or the superlatives to tell you how fantastic this. There's literally us, us four. So yeah, we're gonna hang around here, come back out and take the tunnel of death to get back to, to uh, the boats and then head out for a nice meal with our friends.
So yeah, that's a, that's what you call a pretty good day in Thailand, no? Pretty nice, pretty nice. So yeah, never go dinghy riding with surfers. We'll find a breaking way for you. Truly, this is one of the most magical places we have ever been. Completely secluded, completely beautiful, completely surrounded by nature. Just the four of us got to run around, explore. Absolutely fantastic, one of the real highlights of our trip. So thank you so much to Yoshi and Benita. <laughs> this is pretty, what is this as close to the beach as we get? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Just need Leonardo uh, DiCaprio now and we're away. So up there is like, you can see Benita's up there at the moment. It's like this random uh, hut thing that they built up on stilts. And uh, yeah, there's not much up there apart from like a gas stove and a bottle, an old bottle of propane or something and a lot of rubbish but yeah i wonder who lived up there and what they were doing obviously they went to a bit of trouble to build it abandoned now though well probably if, you, if we could read thai it would tell you exactly what that says yeah Which is spot, nice nice location yeah and with the sun starting to set it really was time to leave this paradise and head for home so back into the dinghies wading out into water that was deep enough for us to get the motor down and then gunning it, timing it so that we could get over the sandbar, over the reef without damaging the bottom of the dinghy. Again, a little bit hairy, but not as difficult as coming in. And before we knew it, we had cleared the reef, got through the cut and were zipping back the mile or so to our catamaran. What a fantastic afternoon, a real highlight of our holiday. And now off for an evening drink with our friends. So a quick shower, a change of clothes, and we were zipping along Gonna in the dark, girl. dragging the dinghies up the beach to the resort of Koh Phi Phi. We are ashore in Koh Phi Phi, and uh, it's pretty bloody nice even at night time, and I think that we're gonna have to come back in the morning when it's light just to explore, because I reckon it'll be absolutely spectacular during the day. So we came ashore on our dinghy without too many problems. The water is actually super clear even when it's dark. So you can still see the coral heads, which is crazy. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go and have something for dinner. We've already had a nice beer on board. Uh, the anchorage is a little bit rolly actually. So hopefully that calms down during the night. Although I have to say that in a catamaran, it's not such an issue, but hunting for a restaurant at the moment. Hopefully we'll find something with some nice Thai food. I'm in the mood for, I don't know, noodles or a curry or something. So I think that's what we're hunting down now. It seems that wherever you go in Thailand, the hustle and the bustle is to be found. Bars selling fancy cocktails, clothes, vests, all sorts of fake merchandise. It is everything we absolutely love about Thailand. From the stall selling art, pictures of elephants, pictures of Thai sunsets, it is a phenomenal place to be and I recommend that you go there just to drink in the atmosphere. However, there is one thing that we love more than anything else about Thailand and that is the food. So what do three Australians and an honorary Australian do when they catch up? They talk. Yeah, we talked and talked and talked and we had a lovely couple of beers. What a very, very pleasant evening. This really was one of the best holidays we have ever had. There is nothing that had gone wrong. And this was a perfect end to our time on PP. It's fine. Oh, that's a good, that's a good measure. That's Thank a good you. Measure. <laughs> wow, how helpful is my glass? Hello, Thailand. Thank you very much. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Lovely to meet you. Sorry, don't ching me, but cheers. Okay, okay, okay. Drink, okay, drink, okay, drink, okay, drink okay. half of it and then we'll cheers. Savouring right. the liquid. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Good evening. Um, so we are here with Yoshi and Benita who are superbly and thankfully taking us out for dinner. Otherwise, we were down to vegetable curry. There's nothing wrong with vegetable curry, but they've taken us to one of their favorite resorts on the island of Pee Pee. So, um, 
thank you to them. Um, anything to say? Uh, it was very nice of you guys to message us the other day. Yeah. For us being so remote to then get messages from other YouTube channels is pretty cool for yeah, us. Yeah, it's amazing. And for us too, like yeah, it's pretty awesome. Like it's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we have so much in common, just generally yeah. YouTube aside, like Australians, I kind of, do I get the, am I like an honorary Australian yeah, yet? Yeah, All right, yeah. so that. Just time in Australia. Exactly, you so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so some beers, some B-roll and some food, yeah. back later. And so the evening passed like this. We sat, we talked, we drank, we ordered more dishes, we caught up, we exchanged stories. Exactly what four friends do when they haven't seen each other for a while. Or in this case, we've only been digital friends. What a fantastic end to our time on PP. And join us next time for our final Thai episode as we finally turn the boat round and head back to the marina. However, the weather gods have it in for us and we hit the mother of all weather systems. The entire Thai fishing fleet is pulling out in front of us. There is zero visibility. It is pretty hairy. So if you want to see how we get ourselves out of this jam, get ourselves back home and get back to Ruby Rose please click the subscribe button. Also, there's a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you click the notification bell, you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.